Hi everybody, my name is Chelsea and today we're going to be doing a lesson about generosity. Our story today is the rainbow fish. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple with sparkling silver scales among them. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come on and play with us. But the rainbow fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called, wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are, cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all of his friends what had happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? Well, I can't answer that for you, said the starfish, but if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him in their glare and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I've been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, said the rainbow fish that the rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shining scales? Never. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very small shimmery scale he thought well maybe i wouldn't miss just one carefully the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish thank you thank you very much the little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones a rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish for a long time he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water the little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing, so it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most pride possessions, prized possessions had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. And that is the end of our story. And so I have a few questions for you about that story that you can discuss with your family. Even though the rainbow fish is beautiful, he's very lonely. What does the wise octopus advise him to do to be happy? Do you remember? When the rainbow fish gives away the smallest scale to the little blue fish, he has a rather peculiar feeling. What do you think that feeling is? 
after the rainbow fish gives all but one of his scales away, how does he feel when he just has the one left? What do you think? And now it's time for our meditation. So if you could get settled, either sitting or laying down, find a place that's comfortable with your body. And I'm going to ring our bowl and then I'm going to read our meditation, all right? So settle in, get comfortable, close your eyes. And when the bowl stops ringing, then we'll start. Today we're going to go on an adventure in our minds. It will feel relaxing and fun at the same time. So when you're ready, close your eyes and listen to the sound of my voice. As you really pay attention to each word, just let your body relax more and more. The soothing sound of each word is like a wave of relaxation that enters the top of your head and travels down your entire body. It relaxes each and every muscle. Your neck begins to feel very relaxed. Your jaw is relaxed and even your eyes and forehead begin to let go of any tension or tightness. Your body takes a break from all the activities today and knows it can rest and be still for these moments in perfect harmony and peace. The rest of your body relaxes now. Your shoulders, arms, chest, and now your tummy, hips, and your back. Your hands relax, and even each finger, one by one. The relaxation now continues its journey down your upper legs, your knees, your lower legs, into your ankles, down to your feet, and into each and every toe. Now your body feels completely at ease and like you're floating on a cloud. It's so very peaceful and enjoyable. As we begin this day, we focus on kindness and choosing to use our words gently when we speak to ourselves and when we speak to others. We're going to pay attention to our thoughts and guide them in a way that makes us and others feel good. We do this because it actually feels better inside and creates a positive environment and a happy day. We simply feel better and experience more happiness and goodness when we are kind with our words, our thoughts, and our actions. Today, we also focus on being helpful to others. Being a team player is important because it makes life happier and so much more fun. When we help others, the other person benefits, of course, but we do too. Helping others demonstrates kindness and action. Being helpful lets others know they too are not alone and it brightens their day. Think back to a time when someone helped you. How did that make you feel? It was a wonderful gift. You can give the same gift today and every day by being kind and helpful to others with your words and with your actions. Of course, not everyone is always so kind and helpful, but these are the people who actually need it the most. Maybe they've never had an example of kindness or helpfulness, and by your example, they can choose to change for the better and be happier and kinder too. You can send kindness to people and you can think words such as, may you be happy, 
May you be healthy. May you be at peace. And you can say these things for yourself as well. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be at peace. Now when you're ready, take in a deep breath. And bring your attention back to where you are. You've done an amazing job relaxing and using your brilliant mind to think about things in new ways. So bring back all the feelings of goodness and allow that to guide the rest of your day today. I'm going to ring the chime again. And that signals the end of our time together. So thank you for joining me today. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.